Hey you guys, well if you haven't heard this week, where have you been? Living under a stone? That AMD benchmark. Is Zen for real? Let's check it out. Hey guys and welcome back to Back Beyond Tech. So, like I said, AMD Zen, what's it all about? So, before we get into the benchmarks, I'm just going to say why I think it's actually legitimate. So, the first reason I think it's legitimate is because of the CPU ID. It's been seen before, AMD have used it before, um, and yet, like you said, you know, you could Photoshop it. It's, it's possible that it's been Photoshopped, but, but I doubt it, and I'll come on to that in my third reason um, as to why I think it's real. <coughs> so, the second reason I think it's real is basically just down to, to timing. You know, that that's it. So, y you know, any way you cut it, um, Skylake, in my opinion, has been a bit of a disappointment over um, over um, you know Haswell E, if you like, um, it's it's a tiny little incremental benefit over that, um, but I don't think there's enough there to make people run out and make uh, build Skylake PCs. Sorry, um, and I think with AMD just releasing their Polaris cards, it ties in brilliantly with them taking on Nvidia in that kind of two hundred pound, two hundred dollar. Uh, marketplace which is really competitive you know that's what most people are buying most people aren't like me or, or like other enthusiasts where they're spending three four hundred pounds on a graphics card it's 200 quid you know um, and the third reason I think it's legitimate is because if it was a fake you know if it was some AMD fanboy out there you know they would <laughs> I'm pretty sure the the benchmark would be tearing the ass out of a an i7 6700K, let alone what it's actually benchmarked against, which is a 4790. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's a legitimate benchmark. I think it's interesting to see where it's going to go from here. But anyway guys, so that's my view. I think it's pretty legitimate, even though it is WCCF tech. So let's get down to the benchmark. It's going to be short and sweet. So. Pretty much, they benchmark two chips. There's a 1D and a 2D. We don't know what the difference is between them. Um, the 2D is doing worse, slightly. Um, so I imagine the 1D is probably going to be four cores, eight threads, and the 2D might be just a four core chip. So like your sort of i7, i5 equivalent, essentially. So anyway, guys, so basically Ash is a singularity. There's no surprises there. A AMD's favorite benchmark, basically. Um, and it's paired up with uh, an RX 480. Again, you know, goes back to my second reason. It's like perfect timing. AMD bringing uh, a new architecture, a new GPU architecture to the market, and then now they're bringing a new CPU architecture to the market. It's kind of, it's all coming together for them. So here is the graph. So this shows you the AMD engineering sample. So like I say, we've seen this number before, okay? Uh, and we've also seen this user before, so that's another reason why I think it's legitimate. But if we drop down to the benchmark, so there it is. There's the AM, AMD Zen ES1D, which I think is probably four cores, eight threads, I think. And there's the i7-4790, and i5-4670K, and then AMD FX8350. So, the one thing you've got to remember about this, even though the AMD Zen is coming out second, is that this is an engineering sample. Now, I don't know if anyone has ever come across this in the past, but you can buy engineering samples on eBay. Don't buy one, because they're locked. You will not be able to overclock it. I know, because that's happened to me in the past. But the main thing to remember about this is this, this has a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.2. Now, when these are released, if AMD chips are anything to go by in the past, like this thing down here, the FX8350, this will overclock a huge amount, I would have thought. 
So, you know, you're looking at these numbers here, uh, and they're getting 58 frames a second. So it's, it's maybe 10% slower than the i7, but I think a retail sample of this product overclocked to maybe a base clock of 3.5 gigs or more would be leaving the i7 behind, I think. That's just my opinion. It might not be the case. Anyway, if you look at the, the Zen chip versus the FX8350, which is what we've been stuck with for a long time. I mean, it is, it's absolutely caning it. It's 35% it, it's faster, and that's what AMD have been touting for Zen in IPC gains, so thumbs up. Looks really good. Now, the Zen is beating out the i5, which is kind of, you know, to be expected. That's kind of where I thought it would be. It's pretty good. And it's only only about 10 so it's about 10 percent slower than the i7 10 percent faster than the i5 so you know i think that's a good thing um and this is why i think it's real because i think if some if this was fake this would be way up here and it wouldn't be benchmarked against the haswell chip it would be benchmarked against the skylake chip <clears throat> so yeah i think this is pretty legitimate um it's quite an encouraging benchmark. Benchmark again, as I said previously, it's an engineering sample. Keep that in mind. Um, don't be disheartened by this 58 frames per second because, like I say, a retail sample is likely to have a higher base clock and a higher boost clock, and you're going to be able to overclock that chip, assuming Zen goes with their current retail <coughs> retail strategy, which is re releasing unlock chips might not be the case but I'm pretty sure they're gonna stick with that I don't see I don't see them having a locked version and an unlocked version and, and getting into this kind of the realms of the Intel tax with the K version chips which is just a joke to be honest um, so yeah I mean interesting stuff it's a really good article I'll link the article in the in the in, in the video description below um, so yeah guys I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about about this. I've heard a lot of people online they've just been thinking it was a bit of a disappointment. I mean to me I think where AMD have been compared to where they're going to be going to with regards to this benchmark and it is just one benchmark and it is an Ashes of the Singularity which we all know is AMD's favorite benchmark to run. <clears throat> but regardless of that it's 35% faster than an FX8350 with a boost clock of 4 gigahertz. That's 800 megahertz faster than that chip. Um, so that's huge, and it's got a lower TDP. You know, so it's pulling less power. It's it's going to be easier to cool. Um, so for me, you know, um, yeah, excited, excited to see what what AMD are going to do with Zen. Um, I'm going to buy one. There's no two ways about that. I will be buying a Zen chip. I will be building it just to see how it stacks up against Intel. Um, and I'm not expecting it to, to beat Intel. I don't want it to beat um, Skylake, Cabby Lake. I don't need it to do that. I just want it to compete. And I would just like to have a bit more competition again. And that would be great. And that would make me happy. So guys, that's my view on the whole uh, <laughs> Ashes of the Singularity Zen benchmark. Uh, Tell me what you think. I mean, put a comment down below if you don't agree with me, if you think it's rubbish, if you think some AMD fanboys come up with this. Put a comment in the comment section and I'll get back to you. But anyway, guys, um, I'm going to get on out of here. It's pretty late at night. I've got the lights set up. So if you like the video, like it. If you dislike it, dislike it. If you dislike it, like I said, leave a comment. <coughs> And don't forget to subs uh, don't forget to mash the subscribe button. Sorry, and don't forget um, also by subscribing this month, you're going to be entered into a competition to win two free games at the end of August. I'll be drawing them live. Um, so yeah, take it easy, guys, and I'll catch you later in some more tech videos. Bye.